In our last episode, we rescued survivors of Talon Squad, including Paladin Solo, from the ruins of St. Louis after the Brotherhood staged a battle against the Super Mutants there, a battle that they lost, and a battle in which General Barnaby was kidnapped. We couldn't save him, and so we drove back to Bunker Gamma, hanging our heads in defeat. After selling our gear, we can check out the Recruits Master. We don't find any new recruits, but I decided I wanted to make a bit of a change in my lineup. In the last mission, I was frustrated to discover that even though Stoma, my big guns character, had great strength, his agility was so low that he didn't have enough action points to use the missile launcher. So I decided to swap him out for Alice. Her strength isn't quite as high, but she has eight agility. She also has the fast shot trait, allowing her to use fewer action points with her big guns. Her big gun skill is not quite as high as Stoma's or her brother Max's, but that's something we can work on. I also noticed that Kerr the Merchant had arrived at Bunker Gamma. I'm not sure if I missed him last time, but there he is next to the Quartermaster. We don't find any new people here, so when ready, we can go to General Decker to learn about our next mission Jefferson. We have suffered another setback, brother. Most of our intelligence operatives were killed in the surprise ambush last night. I can scarcely believe it myself, but we now have to accept the possibility that the super mutants are familiar with our covert methods. What is left of our intelligence ops has discovered the location of one of the super mutant staging areas. The mutants have a semi-permanent military base in the rubble-strewn city of Jefferson. Additional reports describe multiple generators are supplying power directly to one large structure. Our scribes believe that this structure is a weapons manufacturing plant. You have two objectives to complete here, warrior. The first is to render all of these power generators permanently inoperative. Without power, their factory is useless. Your second objective is to force the mutants into a route. If we can get them running, they'll lead us to either their main base or to General Barnaby. Gather your squad and leave immediately. Dismissed. Could super mutants really be that intelligent to root out Brotherhood spies and manufacture their own weapons? To find out, we can load the squad into what is now nearly a fleet of vehicles we have and hit the road. We find Jefferson pretty far afield, southwest of Bunker Gamma in St. Louis. Upon arrival, we can take a look at Brotherhood Reconnaissance. And man, we have quite the task ahead of us. We arrive here in the northwestern corner of the map. This is our insertion point. We need to find cover as soon as possible. East of us, we learned that this building here is well defended with mines. The Brotherhood has reason to suspect that most of its entrances have been trapped as well. Looks like we'll be putting Harold to work. Then, southwest of here, we learned that Echo Boy surveillance indicates several scattered metal objects in this area. Caution is advised. Due south of this point is our first objective. The first power generator is located here. Disabling this generator will cut off power to the streetlights in this area. Following the road northeast of here is objective number two. The second power generator is located here. The exact destination of the power supplied by this one is unknown. West, in the next gray circle, we learn that scouts report this area to be a storage facility for the factory. Expect it to be well defended. Southeast, we learn that there is an entrance to a subterranean passage here. This is the only known method of entering the facility. Then, following the road north, we find objective number three. The third power generator is located here, inside the factory fence line. This one appears to power the security systems for the factory. North of generator number three, we learn that there is a factory here that mutants have converted into a base of operations. And this is our fourth and final objective. The fourth power generator is located inside the factory. The Brotherhood believes that it powers the machinery within. Then when we are done, we find the extraction point at the northeastern corner of the map. We will proceed to the extraction point there to end the mission. The first thing we can do is move Dylan away so he doesn't irradiate everybody. Though here I got a message that Harold began to look a little better and his health improved. For a moment there I thought that since he was a ghoul that his perks allowed him to be healed by Dylan's radiation. Also, I'm not sure why Harold is white here. 
It appears to be a bit of a texture glitch that wasn't present inside Bunker Gamma. It only affects Harold, and it stays with him throughout the entire map. Nearby, we find a new vehicle, a scouter. It sounds and drives a lot like the buggy we found at Springfield. I decided to put Dylan in here and have him scout east down the road. We immediately find a sandbag barricade. Going off-road, we enter a bit of wilderness, but it's walled off to the east. There is a gate, however, in this wall, but we can't fit the scouter through there. Moving back to the road, Dylan spied snipers with missile launchers on the nearby rooftop. They hunkered down when we got too close, and we find super mutants waiting for us along the road inside nearby guard stations. But Dylan has excellent perception and range, and with his shiny new sniper rifle from St. Louis, I popped him out of the car to see if I could take out one of these guys. Bingo, job done. Taking Dylan through the gate, we find another battlefield littered with barbed wire. There is another building here with a mutant inside and I used Dylan's excellent range to get rid of him. But then I remembered that the map told us that there were mines everywhere. So I brought Dylan back to the squad and decided to take Harold into the buildings to the south to get rid of some of the mines. On the western side of this large building, we find a huge hole in the wall, but the super mutants have been busy. We find mines littering the ground outside. Taking Harold in, we can disarm and loot them. We arrive in a small room. It doesn't appear to be guarded. There is a staircase leading up and a door leading back out to the road to the west. Directly north of us is a small room completely empty. Going down the hallway, we find another room and in here we find a chest, but the chest is booby-trapped. Thankfully, Harold finds it. We can disarm the trap sitting in front of the chest and then Harold found a trap on the chest, but I forgot that I needed to use the trap skill to disarm it. Harold took damage. Inside the chest, we find six frag grenades, 200 rounds of 50 caliber ammunition, which is just what I needed for my browning, some 7.72 millimeter ammunition, and six stim packs. I then had Harold eat some fruit to take advantage of his perk, and then we can go back to the hallway to continue exploring north. We find another room that leads to a room to the east, but both of these rooms are empty, and they're a dead end. Back in the hallway, there is a doorway leading out to the road, but it was booby-trapped. I used Harold's trap skill to disarm it and open the door. But we'll explore out there later. At the end of this hallway, we find a staircase leading up. I wanted to see what was up here. At the top of the stairs, we find shelter on the other side of a wall. However, in the middle of the room, we find sandbag barricades and barbed wire. That can only mean one thing. Rounding a corner, we find a super mutant. I tried to kill him with Harold, but Harold just couldn't get close enough. This is a job for Dylan. However, trying to fire from this section doesn't give Dylan enough space. He needs greater distance from this mutant, otherwise he'll be pulverized. So taking Harold to that western staircase we found, we can climb up it to see if we can get better range for attacking this super mutant. We arrive in a very large room. Moving south to explore it, we find another staircase leading down to an adjacent building. We'll go down there in a minute. There's nothing in any of these shelves or containers. We find another room to the east with big windows we can shoot out of, but otherwise it's empty. Then to the south, we find another room with more windows, but this room is also empty. So taking Harold, we can move him north into another room with another sandbag barricade. I cautiously moved him closer at first, it looked like these barricades were not guarded, but then... Oh, he found me! Shotgun time! Oh, and Harold, with his H&K cause, lives to fight another day. Behind these sandbag barricades is a door leading into that one room with the super mutant. This should provide Dylan with the range he needs to kill him. I brought Dylan to the building and positioned Harold next to him, hoping that Dylan's radiation would heal Harold since Harold has the rad child perk, but it didn't appear to do so. So I had Oxhorn heal him back up. Then I brought Dylan and Harold back to the building. Using Dylan, we can open the door and take out this mutant from range. But 
the mutant keeps hiding so we can sneak inside to try and lure him out and use the furniture as cover. And the job is done. Bringing Harold inside, we can look for traps, but we don't find any. There is a shelf we can loot behind the super mutant. Inside, we find ammunition. Leaving Dylan here for now, we can bring Harold out and into a western room where we find a staircase leading to the roof. Remember, it was on the roof where Dylan saw some of those snipers. I wanted to bring Harold here first so that he could look for traps. Moving him east, we see at least one super mutant still alive here, guarding the eastern corner. Moving Harold south, we find a helicopter parked on top of the roof, and creeping closer, we see that it's trapped. There are two landmines on the southern side and two more on the northern side. Thankfully, the rest of the roof is not mined, so we can bring Harold down and park him at the top of the staircase leading down into the second southern building. We'll explore it in a bit. Grabbing Dylan, we can take him upstairs and creep him closer to hide behind some of these sandbag barricades. Then, when the mutant rears his ugly head... Oh, and he killed himself with a missile launcher. But there was one more left. But then Dylan, with his excellent perception, picked up another mutant in a nearby building. We'll have to get him later, because we still have this other guy on the roof. We can play a game of whack-a-mole and take putt shots at him every time he peers above the barricade. dead. We can loot the missile launcher and the rockets on one guy. The other guy just had thrown explosives. There is a chest up here, but I wanted to inspect it for traps first with Harold. So bringing Dylan south across the rooftop, I positioned him at the corners of the rooftops to see if he could find any angles of attack. And sure enough, parking him at a southeastern corner, he found a bunch of mutants off to the south that he could pick off. did good damage, but the mutants found shelter by hugging the wall of this building. We'll have to get them later. Bringing Harold to the rooftop, we can have him inspect the shelf, but it wasn't booby-trapped. On the shelf are some pre-war donuts and a laser pistol. A Watts 1000 laser pistol. Civilian model, so the wattage is lower than military or police versions. Uses small energy cells. It has a minimum strength cost of three, and it weighs four pounds. It does between 10 and 22 damage with a range of 35 and an ammo capacity of 12. Compare that with the Desert Eagle I currently have, which does between 15 and 23 damage with a range of 25 and an ammo capacity of 8. So the Desert Eagle will always do more damage. It has greater minimum and maximum damage, but it is outclassed by the laser pistol in both range and ammo capacity. And it costs one less AP to use, so a potentially useful weapon. But I need to work on Oxhorn's energy weapon skill first before I can make good use of it, so we'll save it for later. Bringing Harold downstairs, we can move across the second floor to take that other staircase down to explore the ground floor of the southern building. We find ourselves on the bottom floor of the same corner of the building that Dylan stands on top of. And getting close to this corner, sure enough, we see that those two super mutants he had been firing upon are finding shelter by hugging this wall. Now there are some windows on this ground floor and Harold has a pretty awesome shotgun. I tried a number of times to shoot at these guys through the windows, but one of these mutants had such high HP that I couldn't kill him fast enough before he killed Harold. I finally succeeded by using Harold and Dylan in conjunction. I positioned Harold against the southern windows as the weaker mutant moved west. Harold killed him through the windows. I then positioned Dylan on another rooftop corner that had a better view of the wall so the mutants couldn't hide there. This forced the mutant between Harold and his shotgun and Dylan and his sniper rifle. Their combined firepower was really roughing this guy up, but Harold was almost dead. I ran him to safety, trying to avoid this guy's fire until I found a window that had just the right angle. 
Taking Harold out to loot the bodies, we come under fire from more mutants hiding in a nearby building. But Dylan was positioned on the rooftop opposite, and he was taking pot shots. This angered the mutant, and he came out to fight us. But between Harold and Dylan... They made quick work of him. On his body is something new. Flamethrower fuel. Now, we don't have a flamethrower yet, but we'll definitely save this fuel for later. Back into the building. We can use Harold to finish exploring it. There are lots of desks and shelves in here, but none of which can be looted. The same is true for the southern room that we can access through a doorway. This room has a broken wall to the west, leading back outside. However, as we crawl that way, we find that it has been mined. Thankfully, Harold saw all the mines. We can disarm them and loot them. Now, according to the map, this western section of the town is comprised of a number of ruined buildings. We just explored this large gray L-shaped one, but there are a few more in this block that we should explore before we move towards our objectives, just to make sure there aren't super mutants waiting in them to fire on the scouter as we drive down the road. So bringing Harold south of the L-shaped building, we can explore these ruins, but most of them are so ruined that we only find a few freestanding walls. There is a courtyard with some benches, a ruined Nuka-Cola truck, abandoned. And just south of the truck, however, we find more landmines that Harold can disarm and loot. Man, these are all really valuable. We're going to make a ton of money by selling these. We bump up against a southern road, moving west to east. I had Harold cross it to explore this wasteland, but we just bump up against the edge of the map. However, moving east along the road, we find this intersection strewn with wrecked cars, cardboard boxes, crates, and barrels, and hiding amongst them is a super mutant ambush. I don't want to use Harold to kill these mutants because of his range. We'll bring Dylan back here later. Bringing Harold back to the ruined buildings, he can finish his sweep. We don't find any more mines, but we can use Harold to loot the bodies of the mutants that Dylan killed from the rooftop. As we do, however, we catch the attention of a nearby mutant and his dog. Uh-oh. Oh, just in the nick of time, Harold in his shotgun. With these southern ruins explored, we can explore this final northern ruin on this block. Creeping inside, we arrive in a kitchen, but moving to the kitchen counter, we find a mutant hiding in the nearby room. I tried a number of times to kill this guy, but it was such close quarters that he was devastating me with his big guns. And there were two of them in there. I finally succeeded in killing them by having Harold play peekaboo with explosives. Remember, in addition to being great at repair and traps and small guns, Harold is awesome at throwing. He's just a jack of all trades. With all these buildings explored, it's time to explore this courtyard before we move back to the scouter. And sure enough, we find the courtyard mined. Thankfully, Harold can disarm and loot them all. Now, we know that there's a super mutant with a missile launcher hiding at the southern intersection. I wanted to take him out before we moved the scouter down the road. So grabbing Dylan from the rooftop, bringing him all the way down to the ground, and having him cross the southern road, we can try to find some good cover behind these boxes to take out the super mutant. But I just couldn't get a good angle from behind the boxes, so moving him out into the open, but far enough away that the mutants can't hit us, we can make full use of our sniper rifle. Just in time. These ghouls are powerful, but they're squishy. With this intersection clear, I was trying to bring Dylan back to the squad, but his excellent range meant that he kept on finding mutants on the other side of the street and taking pot shots at him. He got charged by these two mutants.
and they almost killed him. With a sliver of health left, we can have Dylan run away. He's only slightly faster than these very fast mutants. So doing a ton of kiting and running around in circles, we can wait until we get far enough away, stop and take a shot, and wait until we get far enough away and stop and take a shot. In this way, we cover the ground in blood, but eventually we kill both mutants. With the intersection clear and both sides of this middle road clear, we can take Dylan back to the squad. Good job, Dylan. We now have one final building to clear along this road before we move down it, and that's the building that Dylan took pot shots at the mutants from on the northern side of the road. Remember, we moved him down south because I wanted Harold to scout it from mines first. Bringing the squad north, we can send the team in to look for mines and we don't find any. This appears to be a pre-war train station. We see train tracks traveling between these two buildings. While exploring this eastern building, I thought I saw a door against the northern wall, but I couldn't get my squad inside. Though peering in, we don't see anything in there anyway. However, the western building on the other side of the tracks does have a door, and we can bring the squad inside. Babs discovered a mutant hiding on the tracks, but it looks like the mutant raced upstairs. In this room, we do find one bookshelf. It's not trapped. Inside, some buff-out stim packs and 200 rounds of ammunition. Moving the squad out, we can head south down the road, race in, and clear the train station. One mutant dead, and on his body is a flamethrower and flamethrower fuel. All right. A Flambe 450 model flamethrower. Varmeter variation fires a short spray of extremely hot flammable liquid. Requires specialized fuel to work properly. It has a minimum strength requirement of six, and it weighs 10 pounds. Giving it to Alice, we learn that it does between 45 and 90 damage. Wow, but it has an awful range of five and an ammo capacity of five. Man, I'm gonna have to really be up close and personal with enemies to make good use of this. But one more tool to our toolkit, compared to the Browning M2, my best big guns weapon so far, which remember does between 40 and 50 damage, with a range of 45 and an ammo capacity of 90, the flamethrower does superior damage, but it's crippling. Short range makes it situationally useful. I then took Alice and sent her up the northern stairs to root out the mutants up there. After looting some of the dead we sniped at earlier, we find one guy hiding behind barricades. But the Browning makes quick work of him. Taking the squad upstairs to meet her, we find a sky bridge leading to the top floor of the eastern building on the other side of the train tracks. Inside the building, we find some containers that we can't interact with, and moving out to the train station balcony, we find it empty, though there is one fridge, and inside we find another sniper rifle. Yes! I can give this to Harold. Now, all of my high small guns ghouls with decent perception have sniper rifles. We also find some Rad X, ammunition, and bug on the shell. Moving the squad back downstairs, we can explore the grounds of the train station. There is a break in the fence that has been closed up with barbed wire, and Harold discovers a number of traps lying here, which we can disarm and loot. Then following the train tracks south, we see that the mutants have overturned a big rusted truck and set out a bunch of sandbag barricades. This was the portion of the map that the Brotherhood told us that Echo Boy had picked up a bunch of metal objects. In bringing Harold close, we discover that the metal objects were traps, but before we can loot them, we get attacked by a mutant lying prone in the middle of the eastern road. He detonates some of the mines, but we see a break against the southern portion of this fence. We can take Harold south to disarm and loot all of these mines. Then, with the minefield clear, we can bring in Alice with her browning to surprise the mutant through the gap. Done and done. We have now cleared every section on either side of this road, except for the building with the generator. Moving south and bringing the squad inside, we find the generator no longer guarded. That's right, the guards used melee weapons and rushed Dylan while he was clearing the intersection. He already killed them. So we can bring in Mother with her thrown explosives.
Power generator one destroyed. One down, three to go. Continuing south down the road, we arrive at the intersection that Dylan cleared. The road then moves east. We see that it's blocked with a bunch of barriers, and it looks like the mutants have dug in like ticks around a bunch of sandbag barricades. We can bring the squad in to clear them out. Ouch, but it's painful. Moving the squad back a bit, we can send in Alice with her browning and her superior armor. But before she can do anything, Babs takes out one mutant with her sniper rifle. But we know there are a few left. We can let the browning do its work. Then moving around to get the mutant in the guard post. All right, the rocket launcher. Yeah, but those barricades are in the way. Gotta get a better angle. What a bloody mess. I love it. Well, it looks like the battle got rid of the barricades. We can bring the scouter on through. Moving the squad to the middle of this intersection, we can grab Dylan, put him in the scouter, and bring the scouter down the road past the generator and through the blasted up barricade to rejoin the squad. Then we can send Mother to loot the dead. Before heading north up this middle portion of the road, we now have to clear the buildings on the eastern side of it. I sent Harold East to explore these buildings just in case they were mined. We don't find anything on the ground floor of this broken building, though in the backyard, we find a bunch of mines. Gosh, this entire place is mined. But as we disarm and loot these mines, we come under fire from a mutant hiding behind some boxes near to a building on the other side of this wall. Thankfully, Harold now has a sniper rifle and he can take him out. With the mines disarmed and looted, we can open the gate. We'll head that way to explore those ruins in a bit, but first I wanted to finish exploring this building. We don't find anything on the ground floor of this building, but we do find a staircase leading to a second floor. Most of these rooms are empty, however in a ruined room that's crumbling away we do find a bookshelf. Inside, a shotgun, shotgun shells, and three stim packs. So moving Harold through the gate, we can explore these ruins and loot the dead. Heading into the building that this super mutant was guarding, we find a bathroom, and inside the bathroom, a chest. The chest has 200 more rounds of 50 caliber ammunition, three stim packs, and some afterburner gum. I brought Harold back to the squad to unload all of those mines, and then I sent Alice to store them in the scouter. But as she did, she discovered a mutant hiding prone on the other side of these sandbag barricades. I wanted to use the opportunity to test out the flamethrower. But I uh, didn't do any damage. Oh, okay, just had to get closer. <laughs> Handy little weapon, that. With Harold unburdened, we can send him back to explore the ruins. We find a staircase on the northern side of this building that leads to a second floor. This floor is empty, but we do find a bookshelf with armor-piercing 9mm rounds. Next, we can move into this northern building. Inside, we are protected on the other side of this wall. However, moving around the corner, we find a mutant hiding from us. However, even if we kill him, we come under fire through the windows by mutants in another building to the east. They surprised me and killed Harold. I had to reload a save, but each time I did, the mutants in the eastern building would race to the windows and kill Harold with their big guns. There just wasn't enough room to make use of the sniper rifle. So, killing the mutant in this room, and before looting, we can send Harold out to see if we can find a better spot. Moving to an alleyway behind the southern building, we see that it's mined, with even more mines, half a dozen of them. Once disarmed and looted, we finally arrive on the other side, and we can fire through the windows at the mutants in this eastern building. We killed one, but we know that there's still one inside, and he's not peering through the windows, which means we have to move deeper. I tried going inside the building, but I got splattered by this guy and his big guns. I ended up getting lucky to kill the second mutant. I raced down the sidewalk with the sniper rifle and managed to knock him out. 
That's right. In addition to everything else that Harold is good at, he has high luck, making events like this much more common with him. While the mutant was knocked out, I ran up to him and finished him up with the shotgun. This guy had a browning, as did the other. We walk away with more 50 caliber ammunition. The shelves in this room were empty. Before exploring it, I wanted to finish exploring the workshop where we killed that one mutant before the mutants in this building fired on us. Inside, we do find one workbench we can loot. It has booze, some food, and thrown explosives. Back into the eastern building where we killed the mutants with the brownings, we can finish exploring it. This southeastern room is empty. The middle room has a bookshelf. Inside, we find some environmental armor and a new Coca-Cola. This brand new type of armor affords the wearer 60% protection against harmful airborne agents and radiation. It weighs 20 pounds. And ghouls can wear it. So I gave it to Harold as an upgrade to his ghoul armor. This final room in this building is empty. We can leave it by going out a break in the wall to the east. And with that, we clear most of the buildings on this block. We see more mutants waiting for us at yet another intersection before this road goes north. But before clearing it, we need to finish clearing this block so we can bring the scouter along the road. There is a final building on this block dominating most of it. It's a huge garage. This southern portion of the garage is mostly empty, though we do find one bookshelf with a broken bottle, three stim packs, and two vials of muty. Muty is a powerful mutagenic compound designed to give the user abilities resembling those of a super mutant. It has very nasty side effects. What? Super mutant in a vial? Uh, I'm presuming it's not FEV as the effects are likely temporary. No idea what this is or where it came from. Bit of a lore issue there, we'll have to explore later. We find a staircase that allows us to explore the ruins of the top floor of this building, but they're empty. That's this block clear, so we can take the scouter north up the road. We pass a road that goes east. We'll have to explore down that alleyway in a bit, but bringing the scouter to the end of the road, we find ourselves at that break in the fence that the mutants had patched up with barbed wire and sandbag barricades and strewn with mines that Harold looted. Just north of us is the second generator. I had Harold hop out of the car to examine this alleyway to the west of the generator, but he discovered a machine gun turret. I tried using the same trick that we used against the turrets at Prioria, but it didn't work out so well. My unarmed character now is Mother. Sending in Mother with high stealth and high unarmed skill, I got right up in the face of this turret, but it could still hit me. I don't understand it. It worked in Peoria, but not here. And these turrets do devastating damage. So we're gonna have to figure out another way to get rid of them. Bringing the squad north up the road, Harold found a bunch more traps. They're all over this divider in the middle of the road. We can have him disarm and loot them all. Then I decided to set the squad out along the road, evenly spaced so they couldn't all get killed by thrown explosives, and then brought in Dylan to try to snipe off these turrets and it works. He can hit them, and the turrets can't reach Dylan, but his sniper rifle does really low damage against the turret. It was at this point that a bunch of mutants guarding the generator found us, but our sniper squad can pick them off. Then it's just a matter of time, really. I had plenty of ammunition. Why put my squad in danger? I parked Dylan here, and he just sniped off the turret. With the turret dead, I sent in Babs and Harold to loot it, but they discovered another turret guarding the other side of the entrance to this generator. So I tried the same trick. I brought Dylan up, but as he got close, he got spotted by another mutant who ran right into our firing squad. With the mutant dead, we can park Dylan in the middle of the road to snipe off the turret from safety. At last, Dylan destroys the turret. 
I then sent in Harold and Babs to explore the perimeter of this generator to root out any mines. Looting the first turret, we find 7.62 millimeter ammunition. Going around the back of the generator, sure enough, we find a ton of more mines. Harold can disarm and loot each and every one. Behind the generator is the ruin of a small building, but there's nothing here. However, next to it, we see a large mutant compound. We catch the attention of a sniper on the nearby building. He had a missile launcher, but Babs and Harold sniped him off. Getting closer to this building, Harold finds more traps, but as he disarms them, he comes under fire from mutants down in a pit in front of this building. One of them charges us. the mutant dead. Harold can finish disarming these mines. Then moving west, we arrive at the entrance to the second generator. We see that there were two other access points to this generator. Instead of going through the front door, a break in the wall to the east, and a door on the wall to the west. So it looks like a stealthy option was viable, but we can use Harold's throwing ability to get rid of this generator. Power Generator 2 destroyed. All right, we are halfway there. Time to move the scouter up. But before we do, remember there was that other side road that we passed to get to generator number two. I wanted to see what was down here. Putting Alice in the scouter, we can follow the road and it goes downhill beneath this overpass. Strangely enough, the scouter can't fit under here. Not exactly sure why. So having Alice hop out, she can walk down the road. And we arrive at a ramp that appears to lead to the large building where Harold and Babs killed the mutant with the rocket launcher. We recall that Brotherhood Reconnaissance told us that this may be a storage facility. Clearing it is not part of our objectives, but where there is storage, there is loot. Since most of my squad was up here by generator number two already, and since Harold had already looted those mines by the skybridge, I figured we might as well go that way. Bringing Alice back up, we can have Mother loot the dead and then bring the squad to the entrance of this sky bridge. However, we see another entrance into the building beside the sky bridge, a big break in this wall. This ground floor has a bunch of office furniture and desks, but they're all empty. Behind a staircase, we find a room that leads to the sky bridge. This room has two more connected to it. The northern room has a bunch of empty shelves. The southern room has a staircase leading down and two breaks in the wall overlooking a pit where we see a bunch of boxes and crates stored. Well, before taking the staircase down to explore this pit, we can use the other staircase to explore the top floor. Here we find a mutant already dead surrounded by sandbag barricades. This is the mutant with the rocket launcher. Babs and Harold killed from the ground floor. We can loot more rockets off of him. Moving east, we find a nook on this top floor and hiding behind one of these walls is a pot. And inside the pot is more flamethrower fuel. Afterburner gum and beer. There is a doorway leading to a sliver of a completely ruined room. All of these containers are empty and that's the top floor explored. So heading down to the second floor and then taking the staircase down to the bottom floor, which was really tricky. The doorway was too short for Mother and Alice. I had to get them to crawl to get through the door. But at last, the entire squad arrives in the pit. We are sheltered on the other side of a long fence. There's nothing beneath this building, and the mutants that fired on Babs and Harold earlier we know are cowering on their bellies amongst all of these crates. I figured, why not leave it up to Alice? So racing her in? We can kill one, then move her east to get this guy. Then we see one to the south. Why not use the same trick? With that, we clear the mutants. Now here, we see a gap in the fence that gives us a shortcut to our final destination. Instead of taking the scouter along the road, we could sneak right here to where the third and fourth generators are held. But I don't want to cut this trip short. Let's loot this storage facility first, then follow the road all the way around. Inside the storage room, we find a crate with shotgun shells and a flamer pistol. We find a second crate with some leather armor Mark II and some Psycho. 
The Flamer pistol is a poorly designed, misconceived weapon, essentially a cut-down version of the Flambe 450. Amuse your friends as you set yourself and everything around you ablaze. It has a minimum strength requirement of four, and it weighs eight pounds. It's basically a flamethrower pistol. It does between 22 and 45 damage. But like the flamethrower, it has a range of five and a really low ammo capacity of three. Compare that to the Desert Eagle Ox currently has, that does between 15 and 23 damage with a range of 25 and an ammo capacity of eight. The Desert Eagle and the Flamer Pistol have the same AP cost. We'll try it out later. It was at this point that Mother leveled up and we could choose a new perk for her. I chose the Mutate perk, which allows me to swap out one of her traits. I chose to get rid of the weird domesticated trait that she has, which remember reduces her unarmed skill and replace it with the Kamikaze trait. However, when I tried this, it didn't seem to work. The domesticated trait disappeared, but it was not replaced with the Kamikaze trait. So I'm not exactly sure what happened. Sending Herald Southwest towards the exit, we can sweep it from mines, but we don't find any. So bringing the whole squad down, we pass through a barrier and then under that overpass that Alice discovered earlier. With that, we've completely explored the storage facility and we've done a big loop. We are now back out to the road, which we can follow east and arrive back at our vehicle. I put Alice and Oxhorn in the scouter to round the bend and explore the road to the south. We find that one side of the road is barred, but the other isn't until we round yet another corner and find a huge wall erected in our way. Before destroying it, let's see if we can find a way around it, bringing the rest of the squad to join the scouter because the scouter can only sit two people. And it was here I discovered a ladder on the side of the workshop that we cleared with Harold. This was the house with the workbench inside where those mutants in the adjoining building kept shooting at us through the windows. But we don't find anything on top of the roof, though this would have made sniping those mutants easier. Seeing as how we know now that Harold has cleared all of these buildings, we can use Harold's trap skill to lay down some dynamite and destroy the barrier. Heading through with the scouter, we arrive at the end of the road. According to the map, we're almost there. We now have two choices. We can go north up the road to generators three and four, or south down the road where Echo Boy has told us there's a tunnel that is the only way in to the building with the fourth generator. I wanted to explore this area first, so sending in Herald, we bump against the eastern edge of the map if we try to follow the remains of this road. Though along the way, we do find a super mutant hiding behind a sandbag barricade. I figured this was a good opportunity to test out Mother's new unarmed skill now that we've removed the domesticated trait, sending her in stealthed using her most powerful attack, Gore, I managed to jump in. I did with that gore hit was 15 damage but then her damage went disappointingly down to like three and five I'm beginning to realize that having an unarmed character is really only good against squishy lightly armored targets like raiders these super mutants just aren't even touched by unarmed damage and I'm presuming it's the same way with melee damage this guy pulled out a big gun and almost killed mother I had to retreat Thankfully, Babs was nearby with her sniper rifle. And managed to pick off the mutant as he chased Mother. After healing on up, we can send Harold back south to see if he can find this entrance to the tunnel underground. We scour the southern edge of this wilderness and we don't find anything. There are a few fuel tanks and a platform nearby, but these are empty. But then we find this green hole in the ground. It didn't really look much like a ramp at first until I tried to scale it with Alice. And sure enough, it leads us underground. We find a tunnel moving north, presumably going into the building with the fourth generator. But there's a green river of irradiated toxic goo that we have to crawl through. It was here I realized why they gave us those suits of environmental armor. They would have protected us from crawling through this. So I grabbed Alice to send her back up this rubble ramp to get a suit of armor, but I couldn't get her back up. 
I tried kneeling, I tried crawling on my belly. I did everything I could to crawl back up this rubble ramp and I couldn't get back up. Looks like this was a one-way trip and poor Alice is gonna get soaked in radiation. Well, since I'm down here, I might as well explore it. We have to put Alice on her belly to crawl under this barrier to enter the tunnel. Moving north up the tunnel, we arrive in a large room which appears to be a campsite. Against the northern wall, we find a chest and inside a scout handbook, two iguana on a stick, six beer, and three grenades. Moving west, we find another tunnel leading north. So going prone and crawling through, we arrive in a larger tunnel that we can stand in. Out of the tunnel, we appear in a bathroom. Opening the door brings us to some sort of production facility, and the entire place is empty. There are a bunch of work tables with equipment on top of them, then shelves to the east, and boxes lined neatly in rows. Against the eastern wall, we find a bookcase. Inside, some rat away. Oh, that's convenient. Super stim packs and happy pies. Using the right away, we can get rid of Alice's radiation. She looks better. We find three rows of something. It kind of looks like conveyor belts or maybe they're incubators. Each one appears to be controlled by a terminal, but we can't interact with any of this. We have no idea what it does. To leave this room, we can open a door against the wall to the north. Here we find some meager barracks by a staircase. Taking the staircase up, we see a super mutant but, uh, but he's not hostile. Okay, I'll take it. Resisting our bloodlust for now, we can try to talk with him, but we can't. He just stands here, doesn't say anything. We find three doors in this room. One door against the eastern wall that leads deeper into the facility, one open door to the north, and a door to the west. The door to the west is locked. Alice can't pick locks, so sending her out the door to the north, we wrap around to arrive outside by the door to the west. And here she finds two super mutants. Wow! And with her browning, she just destroys them. Why do I have any other character? My god, I should just have an entire squad of big guns guys. Moving south through this fence, we turn a corner to find more. Then two more rush us. What the heck? I feel like a fool using any other build right now. Alice, without taking a scratch, just tore up five of these guys. Moving south through a break in the wall. There's a sixth. And a seventh. Okay, so they got one grenade shot off on me. But still, Alice is MVP right now. Moving through a break in this wall, we arrive back at the road and we can take it to reconvene with our scouter and our party. So the tunnel does lead into the building with the fourth generator, but Brotherhood surveillance was wrong. It's not the only way in. Looks like there are multiple other ways into this building, and it's time to explore them. Before we do, we can explore this muddy area just in front of the third generator, but there's nothing here. Then heading north, we can pass through all of these walls and barricades, tiptoeing through the carnage that Alice made all by herself. We can loot the dead. These guys weren't just wielding melee weapons. They had big guns as well. Mother's perception detects a mutant hiding on the other side of a barricade to the east, sending an Alice with her browning. Easy work. We know that there are two doors leading inside if we go to the north. So going east for now, we can loot more of the dead and then heading south, we find the third generator. In a crate next to the third generator, we find some more environmental armor and some frag grenades. I gave this environmental armor to Babs. And here we see that Harold's texture glitch really is a glitch. It's not the armor that's the problem. The environmental armor looks good on Babs, but for some reason on Harold, it's not working. And only in this mission. Sending in Mother with her thrown explosives, we can open the door and destroy the third generator. Power generator three, destroyed. And destroying this generator opens up yet another way into this big building. The huge metal gates barring our access swing open. Bringing the squad together, we can head through the gates. You are such a fool. You think you're doing the wasteland a favor by fighting us? 
We are the wasteland's last chance. The menace from the West doesn't know pity or remorse or fear, and it will not stop until everything is dead. Only super mutants can stop this threat. And we need this lab to solve our sterility problem, to build up our numbers. You fight on the side of ignorance. I fight for salvation. I've got salvation for you. She goes down easy. But what did she mean, a menace to the West? Were these mutants not the menace? So... Is she telling us there's another menace more powerful than the super mutants out there? And the super mutants were planning to fight it? Ha! Huh. Well, I wonder if the Brotherhood might have been able to team up with the mutants. Too bad they were hostile and attacked the Brotherhood at first sight. On her inventory is a cookie, a cattle prod, some ammunition, and super stim packs. We find a fridge by a rusting car here. Inside, a big book of science and more ammunition. Against the northern wall of this big factory building, we find a door. And opening it, we walk in to discover... Uh, well, it's not a munitions factory. It appears to be a lab. We find a mutant to the north who says, I must get back to my research. There are embryo tanks against the eastern wall, and then piled on carts by a conveyor belt are big blobs of... What's it? Pain... Pain, they scream. Arrgh, please kill me. Arrgh. There are more to the west, just shrieking and screaming in pain. No, please, no. No more. Head pain. Now, if our brotherhood sensibilities are so offended by the sight, we can take out our weapons and destroy the tanks. I decided to test out this new flame pistol that we found. Wow, well it's got a range of five, but it certainly is effective. Look at this carnage. After destroying three of these, I discovered that we can actually talk to this super mutant scientist. Huh? Who are you and why are you here? Oh dear, your brotherhood. Please, don't destroy my research. Do you realize what kind of resources and luck it took to make a functioning lab like this? We're so close to a cure, so close. What would the Brotherhood gain by destroying this research? Please, just leave me and my equipment alone. We can't stop now, do you understand? This is my people's last chance. Oh, whoops. Well... Might as well finish the job. Now, I discovered by exploring the game files that at this point, the super mutant scientist, after seeing us destroy all of the embryo tanks, is supposed to get angry and say this. Damn you for an ignorant fool! All those years wasted because a few idiots wanted to see something go boom! Very well. If I don't have a future, then I'll make sure you don't either! He then turns hostile and we have to kill him. However, this was cut from the game. In the published version, no matter what we do, he doesn't turn hostile. But we can kill him anyway. <laughs> then we can test out Oxhorn's new laser pistol on these big talking blobs of flesh. Attacking or killing one of them turns the rest hostile, allowing us to easily attack the rest. Of course, the other option is to do as this scientist requested, and to leave him and his research alone. Instead, we can explore this bottom floor of what we now know as a research lab. Against the northern wall, we find a desk, and inside, a rusty old monkey wrench and a house key. That's it for the bottom floor. Moving upstairs, we can walk across a balcony to open a door leading to the final generator room. And we didn't need the key to open this door, it was already unlocked. Before destroying the generator, we can explore a gated off room to the west. I thought the key might be used to open this door, but no, it was already unlocked. Inside, we find a bookshelf. And in the bookshelf, strangely, some booze and a rocket launcher. As if we haven't gotten enough of those already. And that appears to be it for the research facility. 
I was stumped as to what this house key was used for. There, of course, was that one locked door in the room with the passive super mutant that Alice discovered as she emerged from the tunnel. And when I brought Oxhorn down, it was still locked. He couldn't use the key to open it. I then tried picking the lock with Babs, and she couldn't open it either. So I'm rather perplexed as to what the nature of this key is. At any rate, we've got one more thing to do. We gotta head back upstairs and destroy the final generator. Power generator four, destroyed. All power generators have been destroyed. Mission objectives complete. Proceed to the exit grid to leave this mission. And with that, we're done. The exit grid appears against the northern edge of this map. We can head north in any direction to leave the map. Nearby, we find a doorway leading to a staircase that brings us down right into the exit grid. Of course, we still had Dylan out there, and I wanted to save this scouter. So, having Dylan hop on the scouter, we can take it back west down the road, then north, then through this wilderness, dodging trees along the way, to drive over the exit grid. Depending on our choices, we find one of two endings. If we spared the scientist, the embryo tanks, and the big talking piles of meat, Good work, brother. It seems the scribes were mistaken. The mutants were conducting research on irradiated DNA and not manufacturing weapons at this location. But you did the right thing by completing your objectives and destroying their power generators. There is an old brotherhood saying, better to err on the side of caution. This is war and they are the enemy. Further reports indicate that our maneuver was successful. The mutants are pulling out of the area in droves with the main force divided into four separate groups, each heading in a different direction. Two of the smaller groups seem to have an erratic course, quite possibly a decoy tactic. Of the remaining large groups, one is traveling deep into the wasteland, while the other seems to be heading towards a small town. We will have to investigate both. I also want to inform you that Repo Squad has recovered the mutant scientific equipment back to our base, where research will be allowed to continue on mutant sterility. If we can find the cure, it may prove to be quite the bargaining chip. Well done, warrior. Well done. Dismiss. However, if we destroyed the super mutants' research... What I do not understand is why you chose to destroy the mutants' laboratory equipment. The research towards the problem of mutant sterility could have proven to be a strong bargaining chip in our dealings with the mutant army. Repo Squad has been analyzing what is left of the wreckage, but preliminary reports have so far been worthless. In the future, you might consider putting the Brotherhood's needs over your destructive impulses. Dismissed. Interesting that the mutants were conducting research on irradiated DNA when, as we know, radiation has very little to do with super mutants. Super mutants came from FEV, the forced evolutionary virus, not radiation. Ghouls come from radiation, but super mutants are not ghouls. They are, in fact, immune to becoming ghouls and immune to radiation. So it looks like, depending on our choices, the Brotherhood either walks away without a bargaining chip to use against the mutants, or all the research done to combat mutant sterility that I'm sure the mutants would love to retrieve. Back on the world map, we can head to Bunker Gamma to restock and heal up. We now have four vehicles, all right. And it was here I saw that Dylan had leveled up and he can choose a new perk. I tried to see if Mutate would work again, Snagging Mutate, which allows me to remove one of his unsavory traits, we can swap out Glowing One for Kamikaze. And this time it worked! Dylan is now gifted and has Kamikaze. He is no longer a Glowing One. He no longer irradiates those around him. We now have nothing to fear by having him hang out with the party. All right! And now, we'll have to explore Bunker Gamma, see what's changed, and find out what our next mission is. But sadly, I'm all out of time. We'll pick up right here where we leave off in my next episode. I publish new Fallout episodes each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss out, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have already, but you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. 
My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do, and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon, or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members and patrons on Patreon get a place in my credits, and YouTube members get little derby badges by their names that appear in the comment section of my videos, and ox emojis that they can use in the chat during my live streams. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.